that's like a Homer Simpson driving down the sunset type of chord progression. Hold on, let's actually change it to our roads. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a Homer Simpson ass chord progression. Yo, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna give you guys the ultimate guide to chord progressions. So, if you don't know anything about chords or music theory, by the end of this video, you're gonna be like Mozart with it. And as always, before we get started, make sure to go tap in with me on social media at Enviral. But let's lock in. People always ask me, like, how do I learn music theory? And low key, I don't have an answer for that just because, like, I don't know, you just gotta lock in, bro. But what I can tell you is, like, the most important thing in music theory to me is just, like, chords. Like, if you don't understand chord progressions, that's where I would start. And also, before we get started, I wanna let you guys know that today's video is sponsored by Unison. They actually sent me their one and only Unison MIDI chord pack. And you guys might be confused, like, why do I need this? Like, I already know music theory. But I was low-key, like, surprised playing around with this for a little bit. It's basically just, like, a cheat code, bro. I'm just gonna, like, if I had this when I was 20, I'd be, like, a billionaire right now. Although I'm 21, so I guess this, that's, like, a year to run it up. But, like... So this MIDI chord pack is actually going to be super helpful in today's video because like once you start understanding what this means, you're going to go crazy. You're going to be like Mozart with it. So the most important thing about chords is like they're always attached to a scale, whether it seems like it or not. So for this video, I'm going to be in C major, which is all the white notes. That's the same as A minor. So you see when you go into the chord pack, there's like C major, A minor, and that's because those two scales are the same, they're connected. This is like the relative minor of it. So these numbers right here are actually really important to understand. So basically starting with C, C is one, you know, and then D is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you go back to one because it repeats an octave up. And basically every note is called a scale degree. So you have seven scale degrees. And then what you can do is make a chord out of each scale degree. So starting with C, I can just make a major chord. You get all the chords in that scale. So if I play this, that's super easy for me because I can play the piano, but a lot of people don't have a piano and like it's pretty hard for them to memorize like a bunch of numbers and stuff. This is almost like an interactive music theory book because instead of like reading something and then trying to put it inside FL Studio, you can just literally drag it. Also like the numbers, it's either uppercase or lowercase. So uppercase is usually the major chords and then lowercase is the minor chords. And that's pretty much how they mark chords in music theory. So just memorize like this formula. You know, your first chord is major, second chord is minor, third is minor four and five are always major and then six this is the minor and then seven is usually diminished but here they have it as major because that's going to sound better than a diminished chord so what i mean is like you know once you go from your six to your seven this is technically the seventh chord but it's not a major or minor it's a diminished chord actually so that's why it sounds kind of weird but they replaced it with a g over b so then this transitions better into here instead of you know if you just pay attention to the numbers, you can go a really long way. The one is always going to be the home chord. It's going to sound the most like strong and stable because it's the root of the scale. It's literally called the root, the one. And then after that, the next two strong chords are the four and five. So one, four, five, and then one again. That's like pretty much like the most standard progression, you know, one, four, five. That's literally what blues is like it just one, four, five. But obviously, if you want to make something more emotional, you got to include some minor chords. So for that, you got your two, three, and six chords. The sixth chord is probably the strongest minor because it's the relative minor. It's like the cousin chord of the one of, of C. I really like using the two and three. Now, these are really cool places to go in like a transition chord and stuff and then kind of go back maybe to your five or four. So now I'm just going to use these basic chords and make a progression and show you guys like how to apply the numbers and stuff. So let's start with our one chord. So now we're going to go to the second chord, which is D minor. It's a minor chord. So it sounds like this. And next, I want to keep kind of the minor vibe going. And we're going to go into the six, which is A minor. So it's the last chord of the progression. So I want to make it kind of transition back to the one chord. And the best way to do that is to go to your five chord. Because remember I said like one of the most common progressions is the one, four, five. And then the five really wants to go back to the one. 
So next what I'm going to do is highlight all of that and press control G and it's going to make a new pattern. And as you can see, we have all the chords, but the really cool thing is if I exit this folder and go into this progressions, there's already progressions in here. You can also just drag this in. If you want something more emotional, you can just go to the minor folder and pick something because these are going to be more kind of dark. So you can see it ends on A minor because that's the one chord in A minor. In minor scales, you pretty much have the same numbering system, you know, one through seven. But instead of starting on C, you know, you're starting on A. So the type of chords are kind of different. You know, your one is minor, second is minor, three is major, and then four or five are minor instead of being major, you know, compared to C major. But my point is like, you don't even have to memorize any of this. Cause like, if you just understand what it is, you can just look at this as like a little cheat code. So one thing I like about all these progressions that they have in here, you know, the voice leading is really good. And what I mean by that is like, if you listen to these, You know, there's no major jumps between these chords. Whereas if I like do that same progression in like on root positions, it's gonna sound really choppy. This doesn't really sound that good because the top notes are jumping all over the place. So to fix this, you're just gonna have to like change the voicing and like change the order of the notes. The distance between these top notes is like very small and that's called voice leading and what it means is like if i remove all these bottom notes the top notes define the melody of the chord progression and whether you realize it or not you really hear these notes more than like any other notes on the chord that's why it's important to make this melody like be good instead of being like choppy and messy so if i just draw a chord from scratch like let's just do f major so this is the strongest voicing because like you know i have the c up top and the F on the bottom, this is like the root and then the fifth. But if I want to make this sound less kind of stable and more like, you know, floaty, maybe I can drop the C down. So now the bottom note is different and the F is not as highlighted. So it's going to sound like a less powerful chord. But if I want to make it even less powerful, I can just drop this down more. Now you can see it sounds very different because like our bass note is A and the root is up top. Obviously when you're making chords, like you can start pretty basic, but then you can do extensions, which basically means add extra notes in the scale on top of this. So I can just play a C major and add a seventh or add a nine. That's where it gets really interesting and you can get like crazy colors going, but this is also where it gets really advanced. Like a lot of people just don't understand what any of this means, which is fine because like, it, I mean, it's all a learning process. Like you just got to get the basic chords down first and then you can start adding stuff. And especially if you're a beginner, this is like super helpful. Cause like you can just drag this in any of these is pretty much like a replacement to a regular C major. So if you start to memorize the numbers and kind of understand like how the chords like work in relationship with each other, then you can go into these extensions and, you know, juice it up. You see the numbers are still here because it's essentially the same chord. It's just kind of like a more colorful version of it. D7 sus so two. That's pretty cool. And then let's go to like A minor because you know, that's our relative minor. It'll sound really good. I'm just gonna pick A minor nine. Just remember that like the six is your a relative minor. And then again, I'm just gonna press control G to make this one pattern. I kind of want to make a beat with one of these progressions. I want something more juiced up. So let's just go through these. That actually sounded fire, hold up. I'll just go to a different one. I could see that being a crazy vapor wave kind of like chord progression. I like this one a lot, but let's actually change the sound. I want to make something kind of like rage feel. And again, with the voice leading, I'm just going to change this note. And also what I'm going to do is just copy this and remove this chord over here. So that's just going to be a transition chord in the second half, just to kind of make it more interesting. Oh, that's fire. I want to add like a crazy sliding lead from here. So let's just pick one of these. Hold up. 
Hold up, bro. This is about to be crazy, Loki. <laughs> Copy that. You can't really go wrong with the expand pad. Yeah, for pads, I like to play like simple intervals, you know, and also I like to incorporate like really distant intervals just because it kind of sounds really good like up top with these high textures. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just sounds crazy. That's on fire. I've actually been working on a new drum kit called Systems. So let's try out some of these sounds and go crazy. I'm just gonna juice up the high hats real quick. this snare melody in here maybe like some mallets or something actually i'm just gonna use a one shot for that let's like kind of repeat this and Also just put some chorus on it. That's crazy. So let's just split it real quick and do some basic arrangement. So let's just remove that and bring the lead back. to the presets grab a bass slide and then put the alien sub in here i'm just gonna make these like these ones overlap a little bit so it's gonna slide <laughs> Yeah, 
that's all I'm gonna add to this beat. I actually really like the way this turned out. Like, I wasn't kind of expecting to go that crazy with it, low key. Once again, a big thank you to Unison for sponsoring today's video. And also, if you guys are interested in checking out their MIDI chord pack, I'll have the link for it in the description. You guys can actually use my link for 60% off. But with that being said, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot and enjoyed the video. But that's all I got for today, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.